It is with a sense of hilarity and a warm feeling in my twisted heart that I found myself in a position where after a career of making Harry Potter jokes, I was reviewing a Harry Potter game, which is part of a franchise about which I give not one fuck, whilst determined to give it a stunning review, just to piss off a bunch of politically fanatical SJW troll beasts who frankly should get to fuck. The legacy of Hogwarts Legacy is a magnificent one. Someone made a video game. It was about some annoying wizard brats. Some even more annoying activists and a few regiments of virtue signalers rallied together. They tried to cancel the game. They tried to organise a boycott. They bullied and attacked anyone associated with said game. Said game lands on the shelves for 50 quid with no microtransactions ships a billion dollars worth of units in the first month and smashes a bunch of sales records. The streets ran with rivers of woke tears. Marvellous. My faith in humanity is restored. Sadly, however, my review and cogitation over this game will not be an orgy of unicorns and pixie dust because I'm going to have to discuss a lot of the shitstorm, activism and frankly malicious spite surrounding this game's launch and reception. But fret ye not, my brethren, at least we'll get to savour the delicious flavour of woke tears dripping down our tongues. Disclaimer. I appreciate that I'm not particularly well known for high fidelity game footage, but this will be worse. Sadly, my main gaming rig is still in the shop being fixed. They are making the ridiculous claim that jamming up the cooling fans with cum and beer isn't covered by the warranty. Savages. Lastly, I was forced to play Hogwarts on a pre-war i7 with a vintage graphics card with a slightly rattly fan. So if you see stuttering, performance issues or slight loading screens on certain doors, this is all on me. Just consider that the game must be very well optimised if it plays on this creaking rig at all. Given the controversy surrounding this game, and particularly JK Rowling, I think it's also important to qualify that. I entirely support equal rights. I don't support preferential rights. Whatever your politics, I don't give a fuck if you are prosecuting your agenda with violence, harassment, bullying and slander. I want us to all live in a giant love hug of universal acceptance, rainbows and fucking glitter. I just don't believe that certain people should use victimhood to claim more rights than I have and then try and throw me in jail for hurting their fifis when I disagree. My pronouns are fuckface, fucko and fucklord. I'm very old fashioned so I don't go into female changing rooms, even if there are only grown women there. I'm not wearing a chest binder. I identify as an Apache attack helicopter. I also need to qualify my use of terms. I will be casually throwing around all kinds of terms like trans activist. I don't want anyone to wrongly assume that I'm universally referring to trans people. My problem is with the nutjobs, the crazies, the permanently online, the malicious and potentially violent activists, and to some degree, pseudo trans kids who are treating gender identity like it's some kind of subculture. Like being emo or seen and LARPing gender dysphoria to boost their TikTok channel. I'm referring to this specific subset of online idiots. I am absolutely not generalising about trans people as a whole or anyone with genuine non-political gender dysphoria. I'm sure that just like every other sector of life, population, community, subculture or video game demographic, 90% of all trans people don't give much of a fuck about any of this political extremism. 90% of any group is just like you and me, with their own shit to deal with. They get up in the morning and try and live the best life they can and be nice to each other. As is always the case, it's the people at both ends of the spectrum with the most extreme ideas and loudest voices, and the majority of people in the middle don't give much of a shit about any of it. Please don't think that trans people are like this. 
And please don't think that I think that either. If you've watched my channel long enough, you probably already have come across Sophie Narwitz, a superb commentator, and she's trans, and she makes videos like this, dunking on trans activism. Meanwhile, Desmond pretended to snort ketamine while live streaming with an adult drag performer as they read incoming comments such as Hitler did nothing wrong. This fact didn't bother media sites like the Huffington Post, which raised him as proof that the future is queer. Frankly, it's all so very disgusting, and no sane person can look at it and not be worried at what we are condoning when it comes to the youth. We should make no assumptions or generalizations about anyone based on their status. Just as I make no wider assumptions about trans issues based on the kind of idiot that is associated with the JK Rowling debacle. And when I'm talking about trans crazies in this video, I'm specifically talking about the fringe element, the highly vocal, politically motivated, frequently spiteful, permanently online, permanently offended shitheads. I mean, let's face it, if you include all the people white knighting and all of the people virtue signaling, a lot of these trans activists aren't even trans. I will also note that I am not a fan of bullies. I'm all for healthy debate, differences of opinion, and a good piss take if someone does something stupid. That's just part of the natural order. But I have no time for shit like cuck journos and other studios dogpiling six days in Fallujah just because it's an independent studio, a soft target, an American war, and a cheap opportunity to virtue signal while you're really screwing over a competitor. Or Naughty Dog and Sony using legal might to bully content creators with DMCA abuse to silence legitimate criticisms. So similarly, I have been fairly disgusted with the gutter journalism, bottom feeding online harassment and cynical posturing surrounding Hogwarts Legacy. And by cynical posturing I'm talking about those shit heel video game sites that spew articles about how transphobic the game is then offer a quick disingenuous disclaimer about how they don't support JK Rowling or the game, before shitting out hundreds of features on quest guides, where to find the best loot and how the perk system works. Because really, it's just about those dollar dollar bills. Fuck the lot of them. So yeah, if I was ever destined to be biased on the topic of Hogwarts Legacy, I was always going to come down in its defence as a matter of principle. I have never seen an issue become so central so quickly as the whole trans debate. It really has risen up, sprung up from almost nowhere. I argue in the book that there's a loosely affiliated conglomeration of businesses, law firms, media outlets, um, corporations, and academic institutions that are all sort of working together to push this, and there's a lot of money behind it. The incident at Speaker's Corner where a bunch of male trans activists decided to pummel a grandmother. It is just not the case, which we have been hmm. told, that transgender is a coherent category of people who are just fighting for their civil rights. It's just not true. Women were showing up saying, listen, we're not against trans rights, but we don't accept the idea that people with male anatomy be in the female section. Mm -hmm. It makes us uncomfortable. And Tifa showed up, started actually attacking some of these ladies. It is a very top heavy, very heavily funded, uh, top down movement to abolish sex throughout society. And people have bought it. I don't know why people have bought it. I'm as mystified as you are. One example is John Stryker. He's a very wealthy man. He's a billionaire. And he founded something called the Arcus Foundation, which hands out grants, multi-million dollar grants, to fund this. Oh, 
These absolute freaks, these absolute fucking degenerate people out there assaulting Riley Gaines. Young transgender people are particularly vulnerable to violent radicalization. And in my reporting on left-wing extremism, in months for months now, I've documented and tracked this surge in violent rhetoric by self-identified trans militant activists, particularly on Twitter. You're not educated on genetics. Would you to discuss the genetics? Or well, well, no, what no. What are your genetics? I, I, you cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. No, no, no. Stop. <laughs> hey, oh, oh, look at this. Yes. This is this is why these people here. Get out of the way. Get off me. Get the yes. This is why we don't welcome these sort of people here on our turf at all. And I'm so glad that all of us came together today in solidarity and drove her out. There was a bit of violence that it didn't turn out as a peaceful protest, but um, that usually always happens when two groups collide. Do you think it was peaceful? No. It was an embarrassing day for New Zealand. Uh, the free speech, you know, it's just dead. If this is what you get. Women who wanted to speak up for women's only spaces and the safety of women and girls in New Zealand have been shouted down, uh, punched, have spat on, had uh, paint splattered on them. I don't care. You're a piece of shit. I'm happy for the day. I'm happy for the Really? Yeah, fair piece of Do you want to tell the police that you're inciting violence? Should I just get that? No, you tell them. Go. 28 year old Audrey Hale shot their way into Covenant Presbyterian School, took six lives, three children, three adults, shot up police vehicles from a second story window, then was killed by officers. Police say the shooting was carefully planned. Uh, there's right now a theory of that's, that we may be able to talk about later, but it's not confirmed. Police have not released a motive, but confirmed Hale identified as transgender. When asked whether gender identity played a role in the shooting, the chief didn't answer yes or no. We can give you that at a later time. There is uh, some theory to that. We're investigating all the leads, and once we know exactly, we'll let you know. Jocelyn Berry was the press secretary for Katie Hobbs. As of today, she no longer is after posting this meme here saying, us, when we see transphobes. The Trans Day of Vengeance, an activist demonstration in support of the transgender community, will proceed as planned, despite widespread backlash after a mass shooting in Nashville, Tennessee, left three children and three adults dead. Mr. Stryker is also heir to a medical supply company. So if you sort oh, of connect- Oh no. Yeah, yeah, oh, so no. you, you connected that dot pretty quickly. Oh no, okay, so can you connect that dot for anybody listening who hasn't connected that dot? What kind of medical supply chain, what, did, what is he heavily invested in? So the medical supply industry stands to gain a lot of money and earn a lot of profit by conducting cosmetic surgeries on confused children and young people. Uh, we can't omit pharma. You. No. You. Hey. Hey, did you just say he came here to incite violence by forcing his opinion on people? Yes. You think he came here to incite violence because they got offended by his sign? When you what talk to someone and scream at someone and he put didn't your scream face... at all. Yes, he, he did. Didn't, they put their face in his face. What yes. is wrong with okay. you? Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. You not... uh, can somebody film this? Here, a group of protesters are blocking her way. We need to get into there. I don't like being on a stairwell where I'm frightened that I'm going to be pushed down by a man with a balaclava and a mask who's telling me that he's a woman and that if I don't accept that, I'm a Nazi. He hit me! 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 He hit me!
Stephanie, put her in hurry. Put your hands on that they're again. Letting her go. Listen to me. They're letting her go. And I'm the one in the wrong. I get I get assaulted, socked in the face, and, and then they just let him walk away. We need to address the situation with J.K. Rowling. There is no discussion about Hogwarts Legacy without also addressing the politics external to, and as a consequence, internal to the game. Seriously, the controversies, political activism and media uproar is as much part of Hogwarts Legacy as the game itself. There was an attempted and failed boycott, an organised online hate campaign, harassment of streamers, death threats, constant attacks on JK Rowling, and on at least one occasion, JK Rowling's lawyers had to get involved because she was slandered and her reputation impugned by some online squeaking virtue signalling fantasist spreading lies about her. He subsequently retracted his insults and offered an apology. But why did all of this shit happen? And what was the cause? Rowling has been responsible for making some outrageous, hateful and bigoted comments on social media, apparently. I don't personally know exactly what she said, but people are calling her lots of rude names, so it must all be true, whatever it is, right? On one occasion, I think she said something utterly reprehensible, like, Six-year-old girls should apparently be able to get changed at the local swimming pool without having some fat middle-aged man slap their cock across their foreheads. Rebellion. Then she went on to claim that somehow it was now apparently unreasonable for men to spontaneously declare that they were females, just so they could gain access to women's only spaces, like refuges for battered wives, just so they could go in and beat the fuck out of their ex-misses. Then, apparently she doubled down on this hate-mongering and vicious bigotry by claiming something insane, like repeat sex offenders shouldn't have the right to self-identify as a woman, switch gender a few weeks before sentencing, just so they can get sent to a women's jail, where they attack the female inmates, exactly like everyone knew they fucking would. JK Rowling clearly knows no bounds when it comes to making outrageous statements that defy the norms and sensibilities of modern civil society. A modern civil society that currently throws people in jail for posting memes on Twitter, tries to legalise sex change operations for infants, formalises the grooming of children in schools, and seeks to circumvent legal equality, parental control and the welfare of children in order to push an agenda that is best described as nonsensical and at worst degenerate. There seems to be no bounds to the toxic vitriol this woman spews forth. Next she's going to be saying that it's not okay for male athletes to take a six month course of female hormones and then crush the skulls of female MMA fighters or break all the female athletics world records in a week. What? manner of insanity is this lady peddling? Look, I don't know specifically all the stuff she said on Twitter, but I took a quick look and I can certainly say this, it mostly looked pretty reasonable and tame to me. A lot of it had to do with men pretending to be women in order to do harm to women, particularly vulnerable women. She's trying to protect women and children. Her opinions are vastly more reasonable than the conduct of her critics, and if you listen to what people say about JK Rowling and take it at face value, you would assume she was some kind of evil movie villain who runs death camps for trans people. Sadly, it's nothing as sensational or exciting. She is entirely agreeable about sensible policies and support for trans people. She just doesn't agree with writing an ideological blank check and handing it over to the extreme trans activists. As a result of saying completely sensible stuff on the internet and bankrolling a bunch of feminist stuff, women's charities and other worthy causes, JK Rowling has been stalked, doxxed, got death threats more times than I can count, received a barrage of hateful, threatening and abusive comments, 
despite actually doing charity work that's worth a damn and trying to make the world a better place. A big part of the JK Rowling anti-trans hate mob villainy is this. She is not guilty of saying the stuff people criticise her for. Many of the haters hate her based on other people's accusations or third-hand accounts or interpretations of intent and not her actual words. She has not said a damn thing that would so much as raise an eyebrow five to ten years ago before this era of ultra-progressive witch-burning Twitter culture. It's a classic lynch mob mentality. Villagers bumblefuck around a corner, see a witch burning, ask what's going on? Some potato-eating idiot shouts, she's a witch! So they all scream and join in the witch burning. They all think they're helping the village, but they're just being fucking ingrates. She has said a few base things on Twitter and everyone lost their shit because she was not 100% totally supportive of absolutely unconditional and uncritical progressive trans nonsense and noncery. In fact, the majority of all criticism, slurs and anger towards Rowling are based on accusations which are 100% factually untrue. And if you don't believe me, go and do some real research yourself. Don't look at what people say about her alleged opinions. Go and look at her incredibly benign tweets and interviews. She lives in fucking Scotland, which has social media laws that are as strict as Russia. Not even kidding. If she had said anything that was remotely anti-trans, she would have been arrested and questioned by now. But the situation with Rowling raises some serious issues about liberty and freedom of expression. Since when has not actively supporting a progressive cause been a crime? That is absolute textbook totalitarianism. I think trans people should have equal rights. Not special rights or discriminatory rights, but equal rights. That's fair, right? I should not be forced to or punished if I refuse to kneel for BLM, wear a Pride t-shirt or announce my unconditional support for some nefarious trans activist political cause and giving them access to children so they can encourage gender dysphoria amongst tween age kids. What do you think I am? Netflix? And this is a critical point. People are getting into shit for not being bullied into supporting certain causes these days. Causes should not be mandatory. I'm not trying to take any moral high ground here. I'm not claiming to be virtuous. I'm a filthy bastard. If the girl is willing or offering paid services and any activity would be considered legal in Texas, I'll be crawling around the motel room floor in a drunken stupor as fast as the next red-blooded pisshead. But there are fucking limits to what society should permit, subsidise and protect in law, and people should not be a target of physical or judicial violence for merely objecting to people advancing ridiculous agendas that put the interests of fringe political activism above the interests of society as a whole. Rowling's unfair treatment is best summed up by the many twat disclaimers I've seen or heard by YouTubers covering this game or publications profiteering off its popularity. They issue some form of hypocritical retraction or disclaimer about how they want nothing to do with her and once they have simped their woke credentials, they jump right in on covering Hogwarts Legacy because it's good for business and clicks. This is the levels of hypocrisy we're dealing with here. I've seen entire hit pieces which only trade in pejoratives and not first-hand evidence of what JK Rowling actually said. Some of the online activities are tantamount and certainly qualify as politically motivated industrial espionage, and a lot of this kind of nonsense is motivated by a political mindset that can only exist in the realms of internet land, where people can sit on highly censored forums and say completely batshit crazy things and have everyone take what they say as fact. I only recently discovered that there are people who completely unironically think that there is a trans genocide going on right now here in the UK. A literal genocide. At a point where police cars have pride flags and you can get arrested for misgendering someone in the United Kingdom 
These crazy fucks literally believe there is a trans genocide going on. Do these cretins not own a dictionary? These guys don't have political views. They believe shit that is factually wrong and require some form of delusional thinking or psychotic break to even consider as true. The entire controversy really hinges on two different world views of trans issues. Some people, mostly reasonable tolerant people, believe stuff like this. Some people are transgender, they neither fall into one sex or the other, they deserve equal rights, and since it's a condition which undeniably is incredibly highly correlated with other mental health problems, these people should have medical and psychiatric support in order to help them lead happy and healthy lives. For some people, they're born a bit of both, and they're happy with that. Others need medical and psychiatric intervention in order to resolve the situation. No harm, no foul. And before anyone jumps on me for associating transgender issues with mental health problems, just go and Google transgender mental health issues and see for yourself. Then, of course, there is the other school of thought. Transgenderism is a political activist cause. Trans people deserve more rights than anyone else. Any rights given to trans people are good rights. Anyone who opposes any of this is a fascist. Everyone must be compelled by law to unconditionally support and agree with trans activists, however extreme their views. Anyone should be able to arbitrarily decide their own gender and self-identify as whatever they like at a moment's notice with all the legal ramifications that come with that. Age should play no factor in this, so if your three-year-old says he wants to play with dollies and wear dresses, you should be able to give him puberty blockers and cut his cock off at the earliest possible opportunity. Misgendering someone should be a crime, an Orwellian crime when you consider that transgender means automatically there's no clear binary sex status, but nevertheless, getting it wrong should be a criminal offence. That's like me dressing up in camouflage, hiding in the woods, and reporting dog walkers for assault when they tread on my hand. And associated with all of this is the absolutely chilling demands that everyone else should be compelled to actively support all trans activism unconditionally or face censure. We want to do like a gender transition to, to the female. But we don't want to neuter. So we're, we're just filming a documentary for his transition. No, no, <laughs> Who would do a documentary on their dog's transition? These guys. <laughs> he calls them a transphobic for not doing gender transition surgeries on dogs, which technically, if we're like subscribed to the 1984 rule book, absolutely that's transphobic. We got to shut this veterinary clinic down. Uh, all they're doing is making sick animals well and saving lives. They are doing nothing to perpetuate the internal truth of dogs that we have to guess at. Got to put an end to these fascists. Trans activism has turned into an almost subcultural, political and frequently violent social movement. And anyone who dares to even criticize any aspect of it publicly, however ridiculous, is immediately branded a fascist, extreme right wing, and violence and abuse is targeted at them and encouraged by others. Well, nobody wins a cookie for guessing JK Rowling basically has the first world view. She is a feminist. She advocates for women's rights. She also supports trans people getting the medical and psychiatric help they need. In fact, many people have argued she is pro-trans. She just doesn't support nutjob trans activists, bullying and nonsense laws. And obviously, most sensible people will understand the issues here. Puberty is confusing enough at the best of times, so it makes zero sense to allow anyone, let alone teenagers, self-declare their gender identity on a fucking whim, change their legal status and gain access to gender reassignment therapy without proper medical monitoring and vetting during the most sexually confusing period of their lives. There's also the other sinister implication of this activist bullshit. It's the part where people are being obliged to support these crackpot political philosophies. For the land of the free 
and the home of the brave. There's lots of good causes, vulnerable groups, injustices and other noble endeavours in the world and I'm not morally obliged to support a damn thing. I've got a mate who's Welsh. You know why? That's right. Your mother got a penis. Your mother's got a penis. Now, if Westminster tried to ban all Welshies from voting, I would happily join in the protests. But I should not be obliged by law to actively support it. With most of these social justice causes, I frankly don't give a fuck. I think it's wrong for trans people to be discriminated against, but I'm not going to actively support crazy trans right activists and their batshit crazy grooming initiatives. And in exactly the same way, trans activists don't give a shit about me and my problems. If I get run over by an ice cream van, are trans activists going to come around here and clean my flat, feed me, and pay my bills until I'm better? No. They don't give a fuck about my issues in the same way I don't really give a fuck about theirs. I care about my friends whoever they are and whatever their status. I don't believe trans people should be discriminated against, but that doesn't mean I have to wear rainbow ribbons in my hair and support the most extreme forms of trans activism, which is fast turning into some kind of sinister synthesis of 1930s beer keller fascism and the pride movement. There's also the peripheral and ongoing issues of harassment, death threats, hounding, persecution, cancellations and witch hunting surrounding this game all prosecuted in the name of inclusivity and diversity. Cara Lynn was a community manager for Limited Run Games. She was fired from her job after she was the target of a hate campaign drummed up by this upstanding member of the community, known as Purple Tinker. A very disturbing individual who's mostly known for organising brony conventions and generally facilitating scenarios where furries get to hang around with young unescorted children. I make no accusations here. I will let Purple Tinker torch her own reputation, because said trans activist, amongst many other transgressions, was previously embroiled in a controversy about trying to justify having sex with kids as young as 14. You do the proverbial maths, but personally I think law enforcement would probably have a fucking field day investigating her activities at these conventions. Well, Limited Run Games goes on the wall of woke shame, not only for bending the knee to reset era on other occasions, but for firing Cara Lynn based on accusations from Purple Tinker because Cara Lynn expressed the fact that she liked Hogwarts Legacy and was looking forward to playing it. Then they went through her Twitter feed and found out that she had liked some conservative stuff. Fortunately, this story had a happy ending. Limited Run Games paid the price for their betrayal, and I will personally never ever fucking go anywhere near that company again, and Cara Lynn got hired to work with Young Ripper. Welcome to the Ripperverse. And whilst we're on the subject of cesspools of unfettered depravity and scum, this is the industry video game pseudo elite forum Reset Era. These guys masquerade as the bastions of inclusivity, acceptance and diversity, creating a safe space for all people. But in reality, they are a crucible of hate who micromanage the responses of every person posting and immediately punish or live ban people for not expressing a very specific set of zealous ultra progressive beliefs. I was tempted to say that Reset Era is the progressive activist equivalent of a dark web terrorist grooming site, but that would not only expose me to potential litigation, but it would also be terribly unfair on the dark web. And probably terrorists. So instead I will say, these guys are a fairly hateful bunch of misguided spiteful firebrands and simply let you decide what they're really like based on this. Setting aside the fact that you can get a life ban for merely mentioning my name, you can get a life ban for trivialising the suffering of alleged marginal groups, but it's perfectly fine to call for the extermination of all white English people. 
That pretty much sums it up, really. Well, Reset Era has been running a hate op on this game since its announcement, and extending this progressively from a ban on saying positive things about the game to an outright ban on so much as discussing the game, or discussing the decision to ban the discussion. Personally, I can only theorise here, but I would not rule out that the mod team possibly came to this conclusion because they realised that any extended discussion of Hogwarts Legacy in that shithole forum would most likely result in an avalanche of death threats, slander, doxing, vitriol, defamation, brigading and organised harassment that would most likely put the forum on the wrong side of anti-terrorism laws. I'm not a lawyer, but given some of the calls to violence that I've seen tolerated on that forum, I think that ship has sailed a long time ago. <laughs> but yes, obviously Reset Era didn't miss any opportunity to lay down some hate bombs on Hogwarts Legacy. Then there are all the streamers and content creators who were either harassed from streaming the game or completely off the platform. I won't get into the minute eye of it because frankly everyone on the internet gets shit about everything all the fucking time. Here is a cute video about a little fluffy baby animal. Check out those dislikes. People get shit on the internet. It's the law. I don't want to sound unsympathetic, but I also don't want to confuse general harassment with people showing up in the comment section and saying mean words. But there is a difference between being shocked that one day you're live streaming Hogwarts and people are giving you shit, and streaming Hogwarts and finding out someone doxed you and has sent 15 personal DMs explaining how they're going to gut you like a fish. I've experienced both, and I'm fine. I'm more worried about the thought police coming around and kicking my door in. The important thing here is that there is disorganised and organised brigading going on, trying to bring down anyone that supported this game. And I support this game, so if that offends you, fuck yourself. Then there's the case of Ivana Lynch, who starred in the movies. Ivana Lynch had the rare sense of nobility and honour to come out in defence of JK Rowling. Naturally, that went about as well as expected. All the Alphabet people and very convention organisers immediately went after her, and the mainstream journalistically challenged press tried to make out like she was being attacked by, and I quote, Harry Potter fans, when really she was being attacked by trans tard activists. Then there's the interesting case of Jon Stewart. Things are currently so bent out of shape in the realms of public discourse that Jon Stewart compared the goblins in Harry Potter to the anti-Semitic illustrations in the 1903 book, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Basically, goblins are racist and anti-Semitic now. Well, the Jewish comedian Mel Brooks didn't seem to think so. He literally played a goblin in Spaceballs. I'm not big on Star Wars beyond knowing that Brass Knockers is a sight to behold, and Obi-Wan Kenobi talks a good game but can't fight for shit, but I'm pretty sure that's a goblin. Possibly a space goblin. Not sure. Doesn't matter. What matters is that Jon Stewart said something that was fucking stupid. The activists jumped on the stupid comment and ran with it. Then Jon Stewart desperately tried to stamp on the brake and retract it as a joke when he realised that he just blew the whistle and was responsible for yet another hate train leaving the station. And it all just goes to show how the culture of the permanently offended are easily triggered and always sniffing around for something to be angered about, real or imagined. I shit you not, all the batshit crazy politics surrounding this game from the very second it was announced is as much a part of the story as flying broomsticks, posh actors, and watching Emma Watson's gradual slide into the clutches of the World Economic Forum. But if you choose to be more efficient in your use of language than me, which is highly likely, and seek a TLDR about this entire situation, then it would probably go something like this. JK Rowling is a feminist and supports women's rights in no small part due to the fact that she was an abused wife herself. She wrote some cutesy kids books that resonated with children and adults alike. Then she made some phenomenally mundane statements along the lines of, 
trans rights should not come at the expense of women's rights or put women in danger. Men should not be able to spontaneously decide they are women, then immediately strut into women's shelters. And maybe something about not targeting underage kids for transitional surgery. Pretty lame stuff. And in response, trans activists lost their shit. Because frankly, and this is the most important part, a lot of the extreme trans activist community don't realise that they are the bad guys. I'm deadly serious. Trans activists routinely call for violence against anyone who criticises their seemingly boundless agenda. They do not tolerate debate. They label anyone with a different opinion as an abuser. And frankly, much of their creed and ethos is based on a mixture of insanity and plain lies. These extreme nutjob trans activists are the bad guys. And they're so twisted by hate and fury and racked by such a poor mental outlook on the world that they are incapable of appreciating their own self-loathing and self-centred hate-mongering. If you buy Hogwarts Legacy, read any of the books, have any of the merchandise, watch any of those fucking movies, you are contributing to transphobia. Jesus Christ, how? Because J.K. Rowling is a transphobe and Harry Potter is deeply rooted in transphobia. Everything J.K. Rowling does, including breathe, is transphobic. Well, what did J.K. Rowling say exactly? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Well, I suppose that with all the cute and fluffy stuff out of the way, we should crack on with the serious business. So what is Harry Potter? Basically, Harry Potter is a set of fantastical, fictional children's books, which transports the reader to a strange, magical co-ed boarding school, but unlike real boarding schools, this one focuses on wizardry and conjuring, instead of providing an exclusive education for the world's global elite's bratty stuck-up children, who will no doubt go on to become the next generation of political dictators or World Economic Forum sock puppets. It's a bit like the school that Emma Watson went to, actually. It is wildly popular, incredibly lucrative, and propelled J.K. Rowling to fame, wealth, and well-deserved success. When the film started getting made, they did the same for a host of child actors. Only unlike these shit weasels, J.K. Rowling didn't turn around and stab them in the fucking back. There is an odd duality of the entire Harry Potter legacy, on one hand, the Harry Potter books and movies are a form of extremely popular escapist fiction. Good versus evil, coming of age. It relishes in the wonder of youth and that time when the world is full of magic and limitless possibilities. You know, that short period of your life when you're smart enough to be figuring out what's going on, innocent enough to be wide-eyed about the world, and optimistic enough to assume that good will ultimately best the forces of evil. Basically, it's that small, innocent, six-year-ish window of opportunity just after you stop burbling and shitting yourself all the time, and just before you become a miserable old sceptical curmudgeon bastard like me. At the same time, despite essentially being an ultra-fanciful, borderline nonsensical, magical fantasy kids book, it has a huge appeal as escapist fiction for adult audiences as well. It's a strange one because it's not like Rowling used the fantasy world to deal with real-life moral issues. I could barely see any moral conundrums in any of the first three movies. It was basically good characters and bad characters, some elements of detective stories. The biggest questions presented by the plot seem to be shit like, will that funny-looking fella ever kiss the strange-looking girl, or will Harry Potter stand his flying broom? And all of this is mostly flooded with a menagerie of fanciful pets, plants, systems, flying cars, and magical nonsense. Rebellion. There is not much conceptual complexity here. It's a kid's book. It's basically like someone collided the mechanical systems of Dungeons & Dragons with a high school drama TV show, and set it in an archaic magical boarding school. But I guess the combination of basic human interaction, existing in a surreal world of magical nonsense, means it's easy to get lost in this strange fantasy world. It's classic escapism. I didn't really get it myself, but I can see why people will sit there and let it flood into their eyeballs. 
It's basically popping candy literature. It's not necessarily going to nourish you, but it's a lot of fun sitting there letting it pop in your mouth. I appreciate that most of the people watching this video will fall into one of three camps. People who know not one funk about Harry Potter because they live in a cave or a nuclear fallout bunker. People who have been forced to endure it because kids, Christmas afternoons on the sofa or because it just happened to be on the TV in the prison recreation lounge and they were too shit scared to go over to Big Bubba and ask if they could change channel because he actually looked like he might secretly be enjoying it. And lastly, there are the Potterite fanatics because it has a huge hardcore fan following. Just check out these tats. So for the benefit of everyone who doesn't know what Harry Potter or the legacy of the franchise is, it goes something like this. Once upon a time there was a nice wizard lady called JK Rowling who wrote a series of children's books. Not like modern children's books which are full of stuff about butt plugs, sex changes and how you should hate yourself if you're the wrong race. I'm talking about good old fashioned children's books which deals with morality, story and wonder. Obviously when I say old fashioned I'm talking about kids books made before 2016. The Harry Potter universe is basically a story about how a group of young innocent child actors all got their lucky break which gave them life defining opportunity, career success and massive amounts of wealth based on what can only be described as fairly wooden school play levels of acting ability. Then almost at the very second the last film was released, nearly every last one of these ungrateful little fucks would become progressive activists and turn on JK Rowling and go full Judas. Like the disrespectful little shits that they are. Hogwarts Academy was technically like an Antifa training camp I guess. Kids show up, learned magical skills to fight evil, only it turned out that they were really the evil ones. Daniel Radcliffe, this twat can't tie his own shoelaces. No seriously, not kidding. He got 15 million just for the last movie and now he's out there biting the hand that fed him. He once famously said, I think of myself as being Jewish and Irish, despite the fact that I'm English. He also said that he thinks he's an atheist and perhaps next week he will identify as a fucking Apache attack helicopter too. The only thing we know for certain is that he makes very little sense and he should probably shut the fuck up. Rupert Grint. Strangely this guy actually looks like his name. Grint. If I told 10 kids to draw someone called Rupert Grint, they would probably draw something like this. Another millionaire who rode the Hogwarts Express to fame and riches, then promptly jumped off at the station and threw JK Rowling onto the tracks, describing her as an analogue of that crazy old racist aunt trope. At least this twat had the civility to make it clear that he was still very grateful for everything her and her franchise has done for him. That was nice. So <laughs> some respect to him for at least being courteous about stabbing her in the back, but maybe next time don't express that gratitude in words. Express it by shutting your bum fluff encrusted pie hole. Emma Watson, the Wicked Witch of Davos. This rich posh twat, Emma Charlotte Dewar Watson, who went to one of the UK's most expensive private schools whilst mummy paid for acting lessons at the Stagecoach Theatre, well she got rich off the franchise and then went full Stalin. She wants us all to do better, save the environment, obey political rules, because because she's a member of the World Economic Forum so of course she wants to tell us peons what to do whilst giving Klaus Schwab furtive tug jobs at elite high altitude meetings of the global elite, when the sex workers are late to the party at least. This fine example of self entitled hypocritical self serving scum fuckery even used an award ceremony to take a pop at JK Rowling. I'm sorry sweetheart, but Emma Weff Watson sucks up to an organisation that wants to turn cities into compartmentalised containment camps and brags about enforced medication that tracks compliance. Her opinions on social justice, lack qualification, understanding and moral authority. The cycle here seems pretty clear. 
exploit any opportunity to get rich and famous. When the franchise is over and you have nothing more to gain, throw your previous grandee and benefactor under the bus. The irony of all these little nobodies who became famous because of the films and then acted like little ungrateful shits and ironically never really managed to do much decent actual acting of note since is that they were without doubt the worst actors in all of the movies in the franchise. The movies were a literal showcase of acting talent. Richard Harris, John Hurt, Robbie Coltrane, Michael Gambon, John Cleese, David Thewlis, Julie Walters, Timothy Spall, Imelda Staunton, Alan Rickman, Helena Bonham Carter, Maggie Smith, Ralph Fiennes, Gary Oldman and nearly every last fucking one of them showed up, acted like a professional and managed to contain the urge to go on social media and slag off JK Rowling. Yet the actors that did were the youngest, shittest, most highly paid actors on the whole damn film set. I think some of these child actors might be a bit up themselves to be honest. After hate watching the first three Harry Potter movies, it became immediately apparent that these guys got rich and successful for what can best be described as pulling faces in close proximity to a film crew. So, a genius like Dumbledore couldn't possibly be fooled by a doll just pathetically dim-witted as an ageing potion. Hagrid's looking for you. Well, you can tell Ronald- I'm not an owl! Do you ever stop eating? Oh, I'm hungry. Emma Watson could lose an Oscar nomination to the fucking podium. It certainly got more character, a nicer personality. It's possibly more animated and if given the choice, personally I would rather sleep with the podium. I have to be honest about the fact that hate watching the Harry Potter movies started out as an exercise in self-flagellation, but I did eventually get the point. I could start to see why this franchise was such popular escapist entertainment for a lot of people and why it brought so much joy to so many millions of lives. And I know that saying that might make me look like a punce, but I had to acknowledge that point because it's important very important. And here is why. JK Rowling brought joy to millions of people's lives and her books still do. All these professionally offended bitter hate filled activists who are trying to get her cancelled, who are threatening and harassing streamers and generally engaging in bullying, spite, hatred, anger and bitter fury, what the fuck have they ever done to make the world a better place? Seriously. These unhinged loons who are screaming fascist at JK Rowling and anyone that dares to even associate with her, they are not making the world a better place. They're not helping anyone. On aggregate, whatever your politics, it is indisputable that the world is better and happier because JK Rowling existed and her nasty disingenuous critics can get to fuck. And any said critics who also happen to be a rich and famous actor by piggybacking off JK Rowling's work can doubly get to fuck. Who did more to make the world a better place? JK Rowling brought us nice books. These people brought… well… clit piercing? Maybe? Vaikka syntyperäisin oinkin mies. Ja tuota, sieltä on niin yhdeksän vuotta aikaa, eli siihen yhdeksän vuoteen sisältyy aika paljon. Eli kun lähdetään ihan nollasta, niin ihan jo sitä, että pysyy pystyssä kahdella jalalla, pysyy pystyssä yhdellä jalalla ja sen jälkeen rupeaa niin uskaltamaan tehdä jotakin siellä jäällä. Ja sitten alkaa pikkuhiljaa kisaamaan ja esiintymään näytöksissä ja niin edelleen. Että sanotaan, että aika kivaa pura on ollut. Mutta... So what is Hogwarts Legacy? Well, it's the 20 fucking something attempt to make a Harry Potter video game. I honestly can't tell you how many Harry Potter tie-ins and spin-off games there have been over the years without spending a whole day elbow deep in the internet researching all of this. The Potter fandom wiki says Hogwarts Legacy is the 8th game, Wikipedia says it's the 20th. It seems to be a case of whether or not you count stuff like Harry Potter for Connect and things like Harry Potter Lego spin-offs. One thing is for certain though, I won't be losing much sleep over this. 
it was developed by Avalanche Software. No, not the Rage 2 and Just Cause guys, they are Avalanche Studios. This was Avalanche Software, famous for such legendary fare as the Rugrats games, Hannah Montana Spotlight World Tour, one of my personal favourites, and Chicken Little. I like chickens. Look, these guys have made what is generally best described as inoffensive fluff. When one of your best games on your CV is 25 to life, that's not exactly what I would call pedigree. Although I did like this particular review of the game. Hypers, Morris Branscombe described the game as absolutely unadulterated bullshit. So I guess video game journalists have always been reliably unfair. The important thing here is that Avalanche Software is basically a jobbing studio that might not have made any headlines or any AAA games, but in one form or another they have been successfully keeping the lights on for nearly 30 years. The staff are getting paid and they've been doing video game work in exchange for money for longer than most video game journalists have been alive. It's also worth noting that after making Hogwarts Legacy, Nobody is going to be taking the piss out of their CV anymore. Not even me. And I take the piss out of everything. Especially her. The game is published by Port Key Games, who are really just a video game label entirely owned by Warner Brothers Games. They are a division of Warner, dedicated to servicing the needs of Wizarding World, which is basically Harry Pottery in all its glory, I think. Warner Brothers are famous for being an incredibly huge and powerful company that owns more subsidiaries than I can certainly be asked to list here. In fact, I think they own Avalanche Software and a whole load of other companies, developers, publishers, divisions, possibly a few small South American dictatorships, and certainly plenty of US politicians. Fuck, they probably own a moon base for all I know. Under the umbrella of this company, there are so many games listed, it's about 16 pages long on Wikipedia. It's worth noting that they were directly or indirectly culpable for that shit Matrix game that conked out when they only had 500 players online, Batman Arkham Asylum, a benchmark good game, and most notably Middle Earth Shadow of War, a game that was so brokenly infested with monetization and microtransactions and paywalled content that it could be fairly typified as a pay to win simulator. Given the modest achievements of the developer, the completely scattergun performance of the publisher, and the Warner Group's general greed and love of atrocious monetization, I actually thought this game could well turn out to be a mediocre, minimal viable product, so wretchedly ruined by monetization, that they might actually consider having pay as you go spellcasting, where you have to put 10 pence in the slot every time you fired your wand. Look, ribbed for her pleasure. Nice. Well, how the world turns, because Avalanche Software punched way above its weight. Warner kept its greed in check, and the end result turned out to be a solid plan prosecuted well. It seems to be generally clocking in across the board as a solid 8 out of 10, across reviewers and customer reviews alike. Now considering the hectoring and general savage media campaign levelled against this game, just over 80% mean average review is pretty damn respectable. Hogwarts Legacy is an openish world RPG-ish Harry Potter themed activity centre, which adheres relatively closely to the themes and lore of the books and films, as far as I can tell, although I'm probably one of the least qualified members of the Potterite cult to offer an opinion. I have not read any of the books, because books are for fucking idiots, but after watching the three movies, I can at least say I got a feel for the franchise, and the fact I could recognise some of the wizard nonsense and locations in the game, well that means something right? You play the role of a small, ungendered child. There were no buttons for male or female because modernity, although obviously one choice looked like girls and one looked like boys. A bit like that t-shirt meme. You get to choose which Hogwarts house you join. Hufflepuff, who are dumb asses, Ravenclaw, who are smart asses, Slytherin, who are slippery bastards. 
whose symbol is a snake, which is yet another example of phallocentric imagery. A fanged serpent, symbolic of the patriarchy, the violence the penis represents and the evil men perpetrate against women, feminism and the matriarchy. Unless of course the owner of said penis is a trans activist, then nobody likes to talk about it because it's awkward. Slytherin are the bad guys, obviously. The last house is the venerable Gryffindor, the house which both I and Harry Potter joined. It disturbs me that I somehow share at least some characteristics with Harry Potter, but it's even more disturbing that a string of people have come up to me and said, I bet you joined Gryffindor. Unless Gryffindor is famous for drunkenness, bad manners and arson, I'm going to assume that this is somehow a mistake. And to give you an idea how Harry Potter has entirely permeated mainstream culture, I misspell all four houses at various points during the making of this video and the spell checker knew what the words were and automatically corrected them. Hogwarts Legacy has a trans character. Of course it has. And that's not right. The only brutes we usually have to deal with are... <coughs> uh, uh, timely. Why wouldn't you try and pamper to the hate crowd in order to try and at least remove the number of death threats being hurled around because of angry activists? Personally, my motto is don't negotiate with terrorists, but hey, if it saves lives. Talking of terrorism, despite a wave of politically motivated death threats being directed at JK Rowling, who lives in Scotland, I have yet to hear of anyone getting arrested, let alone charged. Quite hilarious really considering that Hamza Youssef, former Scottish Justice Secretary and champion of eradicating free speech and human rights in Scotland, well he seems to get someone arrested every time someone makes a mean tweet at him. Someone threatens to kill JK Rowling, no charges are filed. I guess the moral of the story is this, if you're making progressive death threats on the internet, there must be some kind of woke diplomatic immunity. Anyway, the important thing is that there's a trans barkeep, GG. Not that that's keeping the professionally offended happy. Jacqueline Moore, writer and producer for Queer as Folk, slammed the character for, amongst other things, naming insensitivity. Well, judging from Jacqueline Moore's own writing, she certainly seems to be an advocate for intergenerational relationships. That's a euphemism for older men banging kids. I'm starting to notice a bit of a theme with these activists. Personally, I think commentators like Jacqueline should possibly shut up and sit this one out. Well, I guess it's time for us to take a intermission, and this is as good a point as any. As much as I would love to make a two hour video, I would get told off again. In part two, we finally get to gnaw into the bone and gristle of the game mechanics themselves, the functionality and fuckery associated with this game, and try and solve world peace and bring unity between gamers and the trans activists. Don't worry, I didn't bother to try very hard. But for now, good luck and happy hunting. <laughs>